What's up friends? I uh, got an interesting video for you today because today I just want to um, I just want to join you, kick back, maybe pop some popcorn and let's talk about my dream camera setup. Now, I know everybody has their dreams. Some of this stuff's not even quite invented yet, but I just wanted to take a second and talk about what I see in a perfect camera and what I would really like some camera manufacturers to start to make. So I took a few notes earlier. I'm just gonna pop those notes open right here and we're gonna get started. Up first, I don't understand why cameras aren't doing this yet. We're just gonna start off the top. I want internal storage, minimum one terabyte, but we should go up from there. Internal storage would be epic. Now, I don't understand why a lot of camera companies aren't already doing this. Like my DJI drone, for example, I've got like a Mavic Air 2S. That thing takes a 64 gig SD card, probably higher. But then also, if you happen to be out on a shoot and you accidentally forget to format or you fill up your card, it has eight gigs of internal storage already built in. So I'm not saying internal storage would replace the SD card or CFast card situation, but I want internal storage on that thing. Along with that, the USB-C port, I want Thunderbolt capable so it can transfer those 40 gigabit speeds just directly from the USB-C port on the side of the camera. That'd be epic. Internal storage, Thunderbolt port right on the side, boom, just transfer those, those files just right over. Up next, let's talk about the sensor. Now, <clears throat> a lot of this is already invented, so I just kind of all want to take all of the things from my favorite camera manufacturers and really just put them into one. Number one, open gate. Every camera should be able to do it. I know Lumix is killing it right now with that. Sony, step it up. Just, just, let, just let everybody have full access to their full sensors, regardless. Um, up next, global shutter would be nice, but I want to kind of fix these uh, low light limitations on global shutter. So if we can't get a global shutter, just super fast readout speed. Great with me. Up next, we're going to go with the Sony's internal variable ND. But with that, we're going to go from zero to multiple stops of ND without even a change in the ND filter. Because I know right now in the FX6, if you want to turn on that ND, you turn it on and then it can be variable and then you turn it off and then it can be off. But I just want to go from zero stops all the way up to six, seven, eight stops just with the built-in ND that is variable. And obviously, IBIS. We used to always believe that you couldn't do IBIS with an ND the freaking X105 and 6 have it, and the uh, new Sony Brano has IBIS with a variable ND. So we can put it into a camera. Now, let's um, go ahead and just jump right into the lens mount. I'm going Sony E-mount all the way. I'm going to adapt a PL adapter, obviously, but just E-mount is so much better than all the other lenses because there's such a large variety of third-party lenses, of cheap lenses, of expensive lenses. Sony E-mount wins all day long and I'm going with an E-mount on there. And um, up next, let's just move to the physical features of the camera, you know? Let's talk about, let's talk about the physical side. I kind of like the mirrorless design, kind of like the hand grip on here, kind of like the, the standard kind of mirrorless camera design. However, I think it should come right off the bat with a freaking V-mount plate just right on the back. Like forget the screen on the back, the screen can be a flippy screen out the side, but some way to have this flippy screen come out the side, but just a V-mount connection right on the back built into the camera. No need for this adapter and all these things on there. But also my gold mount people out there, of course we can have some sort of adapter or maybe just a gold mount version. I would, I would take that. Like I said, the flippy screen coming out the side, it'd be cool if we could have some sort of way the screen rotates into the camera so it stays protected, but not, I don't need a screen on the back of the camera. If the screen comes out the side, that's perfectly fine because of this next point right here. Up next, we are going to put a rail on the side and we're gonna put a rail on the side and a rail on the side. Rails on all the side, quarter 20 mounts on all the sides, similar to how the FX3 is, but just throw a couple rails on there. No need for a cage, just quarter 20s everywhere, rails all over the thing. And um, <clears throat> let's, let's, I'm, I'm, I'm next, let's hear me out for a second, all right? What if instead of the standard black color, we had like a nice brown leather color going on, you know, like a, give me a nice like doo-doo brown leather colored camera. I don't know, might get dirty, but I think it would um, look kind of elegant for a little bit at least. 
hmm, might be cool. Instead of this black plastic with metal, you know, black, 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 we could, uh, we could throw some, some dirty brown leather in there. Doesn't have to be a leather camera, but like, you know, the color. Hmm. Give me a couple color options, I'll take it. <clears throat> Up next, let's talk about a monitor on this thing, okay? <sighs> this is kind of a big one, because hear me out, hear me out. Monitors need to be made by the camera manufacturers. Let's take a note from Apple here. Just the ecosystem of your iPhone works really, really well with your Apple Watch, which works really, really well with your MacBook. You know why that is? It's because they're all made by the same company and they are all working together seamlessly. I want a monitor, five inch, seven inch, something like this size, but why can't Sony make it? That way it works phenomenally with their Sony cameras. Why doesn't Lumix and Panasonic make their own monitors for their Lumix and Panasonic cameras? I just think a monitor made by the camera company would be 10 times better than any of these third-party monitors that people are making. So <clears throat> just, just give it to me. Just Sony, you already have fantastic displays. You already have computer screens. You already have smartphone monitors. Just, you already have smartphone screens. Just make us a monitor that works seamlessly with your cameras. And Another sick feature that I would like, you know how these cameras have this hot shoe connection on the top that you can plug microphones and things into? Just make the monitor plug into the hot shoe and get rid of all the HDMI cables. Hmm? 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 Little cable-free monitor setup going on that plugs in directly to the hot shoe, or if you do have a cable at all, it just goes from the hot shoe directly to the monitor, that would be sick. And I would just buy it in a heartbeat. So that's about all I got right there. That just ticks a couple boxes that I would um I would like to see. You know, kind of a mirrorless style camera, if you could just imagine with me for a second. Mirrorless style body, V-mount directly onto the back, flippy screen out the side, a monitor made by the monitor company, internal storage, also with your SD cards and your other type of cards, whatever type of media. A little Thunderbolt port on the side of it. Mm, it's just money right there. Those are all my wishes. Those are all my dreams. We'll see if they um, happen in the next 400 years or not. We'll see. So yeah, my name is Ross. I'm a videographer in the Charleston, Savannah area. And um, just starting to get on YouTube here. Starting to throw some ideas out. Starting to throw some teaching videos and some gear reviews and just some things. So if you're a videographer looking for more content, I would appreciate you subscribe. We're on a mission here to reach 10,000 subscribers by the end of 2024, which crazy idea i know but i think it might be able to happen so we will see but i'll catch you guys on the next video bye bye